Um, so we're going to do something that we do all the time in regular fitness, which is just bend down in the direction of you know, right there. Perfect. Totally. Thank you. Yeah. Um, is just bend down in the direction of touching your toes. Not trying to stretch, but just noticing what does it feel like right now physically to bend down towards the direction of your feet and touch your toes. And just notice for yourself how far down you go comfortably and then come back up. And just remember that for the end of this hour because that's going to be sort of a, a metric that you can use for yourself of how easy is that, how comfortable is that, how much self-judgment do you have of I should be able to touch my toes and I can't, or I am not flexible enough. Now come to lie on your back on the mat. If you need a pillow, um, I can get, we have bolsters, I can also get a yoga mat. If you're, would you like a, something for your head? Yeah, for sure. As I was saying before we started, humans learn best. Actually, I think everything learns best. That's, yeah, how's that? Good. We learn best when we're in a state of comfort, not in a state of stress or of pain. And so throughout this series of exercises, what I want you to practice is if you're uncomfortable, let me know, raise your hand, uh, and take it on yourself to, if you're, if you're uncomfortable, slow down, do less. In our lives professionally and especially in fitness, we're taught push through it. <laughs> <laughs> Just do it. Do more. Uh, and this is, this is your opportunity to do less. Let's try having this roller under your knees. So what I'm doing here is just putting a roller under this gentleman's knees. Yeah, roll over here too. And what that can do is just relieve a little bit of tension in the low back. Bolster the knees so you don't have to hold chronic contractions. You're good? I'm just going to take a moment to scan how you are lying on the floor right now. Notice the length of your legs on the floor. Your right leg, starting at the ankle. your right calf, the back of your right knee, shape of your thigh, all the way up to your pelvis. And then your left leg, your left heel, left ankle, just noticing how it is lying on the floor or lying on your roller. The back of your left knee. Thigh. And pelvis. And then notice your lower back as it's lying on the floor right now. Is your lower back away, arched away from the floor? Is it pressed to the floor? Is it comfortable? Are you comfortable in how your lower back is lying on the floor? In the middle of your back, your upper back, and then both of your shoulders, left shoulder, right shoulder, back of your neck and the back of your head. And then scan down the length of your body again from your head through your chest and back to your lower back to the whole sensation of your pelvis your thighs the back of your knees, 
your calves and your feet. And again, as we go into more movement, if you feel an increase at any point in your pain or your discomfort, maybe, maybe even take just a moment right now to say, in, in this moment, how do you feel on a scale of 0 to 10, where 0 is no pain and 10 is some of the worst pain you've ever felt? Are you at maybe a 1 or a 2? Are you actually at a 0? Are you at a 5? But just identify for yourself right now where you are in, on, a, on a 0 to 10 pain scale. And if at any point in this lesson you feel that becoming increasing, you feel your pain getting more, stop. Raise your hand, let me know. But use that sensation as your cue. Because there's lots and lots of ways to go around it, to find ways of slowing down, to find ways of stopping, to do something else. And as I say, we're so used to, we're so practiced at pushing through pain. This is your opportunity to do something different. That's why you're here. So roll through your side and come to your hands and your knees on the mat. If you have a roller, just set it to the side. And if you have any discomfort in your wrists, let me know. There's a bunch of different options that we can work on here. Uh, and try and adjust so that your knees are underneath your pelvis and your hands are underneath your shoulders, more or less. You can try moving your knees just a little bit further apart or a little bit closer together. Again, using comfort as your guide. Does it feel good? Does it feel comfortable? And then what we're going to do is something you might have done in a yoga class or a Pilates class in the past. Sometimes it's called cat and cow. But it's going to be a gentle, gentle rounding and arching of the spine. So have your feet long. I see some of you have toes tucked. Uh, but have your feet flat on the floor. And begin to round your spine. So taking slowly, so even before we begin, this is going to be as slow as you can visualize going, as slow as you can, taking the spine up towards the ceiling and then just back to a neutral. And however fast you did that first, iteration, do this next one twice as slowly. Take twice as much time. So you're starting with a neutral spine, and then you're rounding your spine up towards the ceiling and back to the middle in your own time. Notice what has to participate as you do this. Does your head drop down? Can you allow your head to drop down? What happens in your pelvis? Is there any increase in discomfort? Or are you still comfortable, easy, at least as much as you were lying down? Come back to the neutral, just a comfortable neutral spine. And this time, you're going to do the opposite. So rather than rounding your spine up towards the ceiling, you're going to allow your chest to go towards the ground. You're going to allow your pelvis and your head to come up towards the ceiling as your chest and your belly expand towards the floor. And again, try and do this one as slowly as you can as well. And then stop that and take a rest lying on your back on the floor. You're going to take a rest lying on your back on the floor. We take lots of rests, not because what you're doing is physically exhausting, like going for a 10-mile run, 
but to give your nervous system a chance to reset, to give yourself a moment to pause and say, huh, what's changed as a result of, you can take this mat over here if you like. What's changed as a result of this series of movements that we've just done? How do I feel now versus when I started that? Maybe different, maybe the same. Notice how you are lying on the ground now. I'd recommend shoes off. Okay, cool. Perfect. And again, roll through your side and come to standing on your hands and knees again. But this time, to the extent it's comfortable, put your left hand on top of or very near your right hand. So rather than you can have your hand on your wrist, you can have it just next to whatever is comfortable. But so rather than four points, it's a little closer to three points. And your weight is a little bit more over to the right side. If that's uncomfortable, painful for you, stop and let me know. And in this position, we're going to do the same movement of rounding the spine. So the spine goes up towards the ceiling. Good, but even slower. So come back to the neutral. And then one more time, but slow, 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 slow. There you go. Just that much. And then back to the middle. It's an added level of complexity. We're taking something that you were doing and we're adding an additional layer to it. Each time, even if I don't say it right away, come back to the neutral and then try it again. And try less. See if you can challenge yourself rather than do more. See if you can challenge yourself to do less, to do it easier, to do it more slowly. Yeah. Come back to the neutral. Good. Try taking one hand off and just, just next to you. And then one more time, rounding, and then back to the neutral. Just that little, exactly. Good. And then we're going to do the opposite. So you're going to arch. Rather than rounding the spine up towards the ceiling, you're going to be arching. So your head and your pelvis come up towards the ceiling as your chest and your belly fall towards the floor. And then combine these movements. So first rounding up towards the ceiling, and then arching slowly. So slow, slow, slow. If you feel yourself kind of ratcheting and then back through the middle, just that much. And then, good, yeah. If you feel yourself ratcheting, so there's like a chunk, 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 just do the first chunk. Just do that littlest bit that is really easy. And then stop this and take a rest on your back. Notice how you're feeling right now. Whatever your number was at the beginning, if it's gone up, if you feel some pain in your wrists or in your lower back, that, that's a sign that you did a little bit too much, that you pushed a little bit too hard, that you challenged yourself a little bit too much. If that number's gone down, that means that you're going slowly enough to really attend to yourself and really attune to yourself. One of the things that happens when we're in a state of discomfort or of pain is there's actually less neurological activity in the brain. So when we're in pain, the brain literally is less effective. It shuts down. There's less synapses firing. There's less neurons interacting. 
And so we want to wake that possibility back up again. And as I, as I was talking about my two-year-old nephew, the, the excitement, the curiosity of learning is, is a peak state. It's a state where when we're in that mode, we're able to acquire new information so quickly. And change happens just in a fraction of a moment. So take your right hand and place it on your belly. And just once or twice, cough a little bit. Notice what happens in your belly. Does your belly push out a little bit? Try one more time, coughing, and notice if your belly pushes out. Good. So try and do that intentionally now. With your hand still on your belly, push your belly into your right hand, and then let go. And push your belly into your right hand, and let go. There's such a stigma of tight abs and firm core, uh, specifically in the US, not globally, interestingly enough. Um, and I'm all for the aesthetics. I think that you know, there's a lot of fun and function in a strong core. But what we forget about is that the core is a muscle, or a series of muscles, several different layers of muscles, just like any other muscle in the body. So if you, uh, if you can, if it's comfortable, look at me for just a minute. Bicep, tricep. Bicep working, tricep working. Muscles really only do two things, right? So if my bicep is working, the tricep can't be working. It has to release. And if the tricep is working, the bicep has to release. The same is true back and belly, right? So a lot of pain and a lot of immobility comes because we're holding our core so tight all the time, walking around like that, that we forget, oh, we also have to use the back. And it's finding a balance, finding a, a combination and a complement between the back and the front that actually results in a lot of mobility and a lot of high performance. So close your eyes again and think about uh, actually, place your left hand on your chest. And see if you can expand your chest somehow into your left hand just a little bit. Is there some way that you can press your chest, expand your chest, open your chest into your left hand? And then let go of that. Expand your belly into your right hand again. and then expand your chest. Go back and forth, however is easy for you, expanding your chest and then expanding your belly. And stop that and just rest here arms down by your side. Roll through your side and come to your hands and knees again. Have your hands comfortably spaced, shoulder width apart. But this time, bring your left knee, if you can, behind your right knee. So what that means is crossing your left knee behind your right. If that's not comfortable for you, it can be on top or it can just be side, just right next to. So if that cross isn't really comfortable for you, don't try and do it. Just, yeah, just have it right next to. Just, just right here. Or, or even, yeah, just there. Just close together. Is it there on the side? Uh, if, if the side is comfortable, that's perfect. Yeah, that way you're not. I'd say for you, sir. That's going to be so much work. Just, just have it right next to you. Perfect. In this position, 
twisted or nearby, knees next to each other. Resume rounding and arching the spine. Another variation, another level of complexity. A similar movement, but in a different position. And see if you can retain the level of slow and delicacy that you were using before. Or have you jumped back to how we all know to practice, which is do what I know how to do quickly. Yeah, so slow down. Rounding. Slowly, and then arching. Gently, 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 gently. Good. And challenge yourself to not move your head more than you're moving your spine. We're so used to using the head independently of the spine, but see if you can actually use the head as a as a continuation. So you're not moving your head any more than you're moving the middle of yourself, your spine, your back, any more than you're moving your pelvis, which requires a level of attention and a level of slow that's pretty different. Now, uncross your legs. Just have your feet in the normal position. And just a couple of times, round and arch in this position. Rounding the spine, arching the spine. Slow and easy. And has that changed? Has that become easier? Just through a couple of variations. Do you notice yourself almost instinctively now using your belly? Are you able to let go of your belly more in the arch? I see it in some of you, that there's more arch available, which means that the belly is able to let go in that position. And stop this, come to lying on your back. Notice how you're lying now. Notice the contact of your feet with the floor, your legs and pelvis, the length of your spine, your arms and your head. And this time, bend your knees and put your feet in standing. If you have a roller, you can just set it to the side. Good. Notice your lower back. Is there a space underneath your lower back? Try and decrease that space by pressing your lower back into the floor and then letting it go. Press your lower back into the floor, and then let it go. What has to happen in your rib cage, in your belly, in your pelvis for that to happen? I think of this as rolling the pelvis up in the direction of the head, or I call it towards 12 o'clock. It's as if there's a clock face on the ground underneath your pelvis, and you're rolling your pelvis up towards 12 o'clock. Stop that. And now do the opposite of that. So increase the space between your lower back and the floor. Organize yourself somehow to move your pelvis down in the direction of your feet. So rather than pressing your lower back, you're going to arch your lower back in such a way as your pelvis doesn't come off the ground at all. You're not lifting your pelvis. You're not doing pelvic lifts like you might do in Pilates. It's just a roll. The pelvis is kind of bowl shaped, so it can roll back and forth, up and down.
And as you do that, what happens in your chest or in your head? Does your head start to move? Does your chest move? And stop that. Lower your legs long and take a rest. I love how all of you are moving with such attention, really noticing yourself as you go along. So what I want you to do now is to roll through your side and come on up to standing. Gently, slowly, easily. Standing. <laughs> Easy does it. And what you're gonna do is if it's comfortable, if not, we have props and I'll help, but just rest your weight on your knees. With your eyes closed like this. Yep. Yeah. So what I'd recommend for you is the uh, wooden box over there, is to just rest the weight. That way you don't have the additional strain of resting through your legs, but just resting on the box. And anyone's welcome to use that. We have props. Um, we're gonna round an arch in this position. You can have your eyes open if that's easier, eyes closed if that's comfortable and feels stable. But with your hands on or just above your knees, you're gonna be rounding your spine up in the direction of the ceiling and then back to the neutral. So what I'd suggest here is just, just like this or on here. That feel comfortable? The, this exercise I love, you can do it on the back of a chair, you can do it on your kitchen counter, you can do it on the bathroom counter, the sink, as you're brushing your teeth. But it's just a, a really simple way to practice the rounding and arching. If you find yourself sliding, just take a minute to take a break. You can pause at any time in standing. But you're rounding the spine like this. And then try arching the spine too. Rounding and arching. And now everybody take a break in standing. Just stand with your eyes closed. And notice how you feel. feel different in standing than maybe is your normal. A little bit more vertical, a little bit more forward. Maybe yes, maybe no. If you notice any pain in your wrists, or in your back, or your spine, that's a sign that you're doing a little too much, that you're pressing a little too hard. So I would invite you to slow down to do less. And once more, bring your hands to just above your knees, with your knees bent. And again, combining these two movements of rounding the spine and then arching the spine. Rounding and arching back and forth. And then make your way back to the floor and take a full rest lying on the floor.
bend your knees, place your feet in standing. And once more, press your lower back into the floor to roll your pelvis up in the direction of your head. And then arch your lower back away from the floor, rolling your pelvis down. Go back and forth like this. Notice if there's even more movement in your chest, in your head, and the whole length of your spine. Does your belly move more than it did when you did this the first time? Notice if there's the temptation to get carried away and to, to lift your pelvis. an invitation to decrease your ambition. Ambition is great, but the challenge here, if you want to be ambitious about something, it's doing less, not doing more. It's being more sensitive, not being faster. Very different than how we approach most things in life. Lower your legs long and take a rest. Bend your knees once more. Place your feet in standing. Place your right hand on your belly and your left hand on your chest. And resume the, what I call the seesaw breathing. Expanding your belly and then expanding your chest. And go back and forth. First the belly goes out and then the chest goes out. It can be tied to your breathing, but it doesn't have to be. And stop that for a minute. And just expand your chest a few times. Think like a, a rooster crowing, or maybe like a, a gecko expanding its neck. That expansion in the chest. And then reintroduce the expanding the belly so that it becomes a back and forth. First you expand the belly, and then you let go of the belly to expand the chest, and then you let go of the chest to expand the belly. Back and forth. Good. And stop that. Lower your legs long. Take a moment to notice how you are lying on the ground right now. Notice the length of your legs, your right leg, starting at the foot, the ankle, the calf, the back of the right knee, the right thigh, and your pelvis. And your left heel left ankle, calf, knee, thigh, and pelvis. Compared to when we started, notice how your pelvis is lying on the ground now. Does it feel different? Is it rolled more towards your feet or more towards your head? more towards one side or the other, left to right. Scan your lower back. 
Do you feel more of your spine than you did when we started? Is it more aware? Are you more aware? Is it more available to you than when we began? Notice your chest. Maybe one time cough again and see if that expanding your belly is a movement that's more available to you. And then try expanding your belly without coughing and see how that feels. Still an unusual movement for many of us, but a useful one, something that the human body is designed to do. Notice your back, your upper back, lying on the ground. Your right shoulder and left shoulder. The back of your neck. And the back of your head. Now slowly, gently, roll through your side, whichever is more easy, more comfortable for you, to come to standing. standing now, just one time, bend down in the direction to touch your toes. Notice how this feels compared to the first time that you did it today. And then come back up. And if you want to, try bending down one more time. Do you notice more mobility? more ease of bending down and coming back up than you did the first time. So that is the class for today. Thank you very much. I'm happy to hang around and answer questions. Um, I'd invite you, maybe each of you, I'd love to hear one piece of the principles that, that I've been teaching, that we've been practicing, that you might take away and apply in the rest of your gym life, in the rest of your daily life. But what's one thing from each of you, just a principle, a practice, an idea, that you could take away and continue to use? Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Slow down. Yeah. Yeah. The, Pain is an indicator. Pleasure is an indicator. And we, we, as adults, forget these things. We're so dedicated to doing the goal that we forget that our body is telling us every step of the way. Be present uh, tomorrow. Nice. Yeah. At least sometimes, right? If, you're, if there's a car swerving into you and you need to like <laughs> slam on the brakes, like less time for presence, right? But when you have a moment, when you can slow down, do slow down. When you can be present, do be present. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I've seen particularly men in this culture, we're, we're taught to be tough, to be strong, to have a strong chest, to have a strong belly. And it's, it's this firmness, sure, but the ability to let go actually creates so much more movement and so much more freedom. Is everyone sure? I agree with everything else. <laughs> cool. Well, uh, I'm doing this Mondays uh, for the month of June, and I hope that you come back next Monday. Um, I will also follow up. We have the audio and the video of this, and I'll, I'll share it with everybody here. So, thank you very much.